Hello, 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 hello. Good evening, good evening. This is Ruben Felix, one of your best, best, best YouTube presenter. You know, thank you so much, guys, for always catching up with me. And you've given me the best support so far. I do appreciate, you know. If I check my time, it's around 50 minutes past um, 9 p.m. here at Bangkok. But then, I'm all awake to give you the best and I'm all awake to, you know, discuss and interact and get more of your ideas and also learn some of these critical conditions. Now, today I want to talk about a condition that has given me a very, 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 very hard time to present because this is a condition that it killed one of my siblings, that is Junior. May you rip in peace, bro. We loved you. This condition killed him in 2016, and this condition is HBS. It pains me so much that he died and I could not help by then because I never knew anything about HBS. Uh, this is the platform that I'm able to present about HBS and give my best inputs so that we may prevent this disease together. Now, sickle cell disease is a disease that kills around 20 to 25 million of people globally. But then in Africa, it kills around 10 to 15 million. 10 to 15 million. Look at that number, it's so big and it's so, so weird. It kills, that is in Africa. Now, HBS disease, uh, I would want to talk about so specific, specifically on uh, vasoclusive crisis. That is the crisis that made me today have no brother and I feel so bad. So, this is a condition that I would want specifically most of us to learn and get the best out of it. You know, Sickle cell disease is a blood disorder that basically it's inheritance of homozygous genes for a hemoglobin called HBS. HBS is an abnormal hemoglobin. It's abnormal in this situation. Red blood cells there are so sticky and they are able to they are able to they are sticky and they are unable to squeeze themselves in the, into the blood vessels you know they stick and when they stick a patient will feel so much pain yeah? this is the time they develop vasoclusive crisis that I wanted to talk about you know now this crisis uh, basically it is dealing with uh, micro circulation obstruction and this will hinder so many things in passing through the blood vessels this is where the pain comes to uh, there is hypoxia yeah there's infarction you know there is ischemia the cells die so many so many critical conditions come across things like dactylitis you see now on how to help yourself know what you're able to do as a clinician you should check good history good familial history of the patient you see take a good examination clinical presentation here are so necessary the clinical features are so necessary before you're doing your laboratory practices you see now this is where as a medic you would come in and give health talks whatever i'm giving here is just to make you have the content and you're able to make this condition even if you can't finish the condition particularly you will have to reduce on how it takes place and that's why i formed this youtube channel at least uh, you guys support whatever i'm giving out now Without losing the point, 
vast of music crisis is a very critical condition. It normally pains so much. Patient with car will come with chest pains. You see, uh, pains on the localized limbs. You see, uh, abdominal pains that are so severe. You see, a patient. Most of them are pediatrics. They come crying so much, and if you don't help them so much, so fast, they will have to experience a lot of problems. Now, uh, just in a nutshell, uh, there are so many, many, many tests that are being done. You see, to prevent this, we have pre preliminary uh, tests like the full blood count we have the sickling test we have the hemoglobin solubility but then we have confirmatory tests that are normally done yeah we have the isoelectric uh, focusing test we have the hplc high performance liquid chromatography then we have the he which is the hb electrophoresis that is normally, that is the common one that we have in our various facilities. Now, my best interest is going to direct to now management because there is where I have a problem with most of our colleagues. Now, this is a patient that has come with the features that you, you have. It's a patient that maybe is a newly diagnosed, you, you want to diagnose based on the findings or your examination or whatever. Or a patient that has been, uh, there's a fallout of drugs, or they don't take their proper medication, they don't uh, adhere to the counseling that is normally done, so they come into pain, and all that pain is a result of not doing the right thing. Now, there are so many things that are being done here. There are vaccines that are normally being done, like, like the influenza vaccine, the meningococcal, the pneumococcal. Yeah, you know, to prevent it, the, the prophylaxis that are normally done, the penicillin prophylaxis, the malaria prophylaxis, the diet, nutrition, and uh, a lot of counseling that is done to a patient that is having HBS disease. Now, in managing vasoclusive crisis, we have uh, distinctive factors that you normally do. You see, uh, pain management. Pain management you normally do with uh, NSAIDs, yeah, that is brufen and paracetamol. That is the commonest management that is normally gotten uh, in our facilities that are in the local villages. But then we normally also use morphine. Morphine is normally calculated at, at uh, uh, 0 0.05 to 0 0.2. You see the infants and then we have uh, the, the, the children that you normally calculate from uh, 0 0.2 milligrams per kg but then it's so normally given uh, four hourly now mm, the analgesic itself is not enough to manage pain we have what we call superhydration superhydration is uh, hydrating uh, the client with enough fluids yeah uh, the best fluid here is normal saline uh, how you do super hydration is this way super let's say a patient comes with uh, it's normally you calculate per bulkage body weight let's say a patient has 26 kgs how you're going to break this down uh, there's a formula, constant formula, that you normally use. Now, 26 has 10 kgs, 10 kgs, and we have 6. Now, the first 10, you multiply it by 100. That is 1,000 mils. The second 10, you multiply it by 50. That is 50. Then, the second, the, the third remaining, that is 6, you multiply by 20. Then, you get your total field. And you ensure that this patient gets fluids and uh, you make sure that the fluids are just stopped when the pain 
are submerged. That is how you shall help the patient, making sure that the patient is taking analgesics and you've taken enough samples, you've taken full hemogram, maybe you want to check the blood cells situation, maybe there's an infection coming in, maybe you do a BS for NPS, maybe there's malaria, you see that's why we give them prophylaxis that is coming in, okay? Now, that is super rehydration and that is the painkillers. You're not done yet. Okay. These patients are normally given hydroxyurea. Hydroxyurea is a very, very uh, good drug. It's not just given. The condition where it's normally given. Now, this is a sickle cell patient with a vasoclusive crisis that is so severe and anemias that are so much critical. Now, you give them to children that are over nine months with sickle cell. You see? They can also, it can also be given to adults that have experienced three consecutive cases of vasoclusive crisis in a year. It can also be given to recurrent priapism, you know, in a clientele that you have. And then, you don't just give uh, the drug, there are several contraindications like the pregnant women, like uh, giving it to uh, mothers who are pregnant. Uh, it has got some teratogenic effects that will interfere with your baby as a, as a, as a, as a mother. So it's not just being given. Now, uh, the constant, uh, how it's given, we normally have uh, the 500 in the market, but then 250 milligrams it's not easy to get. The 500 is what we have. So this is how you break it. Children, that is 20 milligrams per kg. Times seven, that is seven days in a week. Yeah? And then you multiply by the, by the weight. Okay? But then adults, uh, the constant that you use is 15 milligrams per kg. Times seven and also times seven that is the seven days and then times the weight that they have then you break it into a week these are clients that you have to give them folic acid folic acid will help them to like you know increase the the hp yeah they some of them will present with low hps uh, less than even one i've seen see so uh recurrent transfusions these are patients who will come with you will transfuse them automatically if their HBs are down because someone having acute chest syndrome, if you don't trans transfuse them, actually they will die because they experience too much, too much uh, uh, chest pains and all that. They may develop even portal hypertension if they are not handled properly. Now, another thing that is normally done here is giving antibiotics. Antibiotics is given here, the best choice is exfengendamizin, but then it will depend on how the, the, the white blood cells are seen and all those parameters. It will depend on your assessment as a clinician or as a medical officer or whoever is handling the patient. Now, another thing that is very key is giving uh, prophylaxis, that is proguanil. Proguanil is normally given to prevent uh, malaria and probonil is uh, the best and the best that we use for mefloquine but probonil is what we normally use nowadays now they are normally given the pain v but then uh, five years and above we don't give the, the pain v okay you stop it zero to three years is normally given pain v 125 milligrams bd in a month as you do your clinic and check if these uh, drugs are helping your patients, you know. Don't forget, and don't forget, and don't forget to do your thorough educational management. That is a very, very best management. Teach your client on how to identify the danger signs on how to cope up into the environment because 
this is a challenge to patients uh, because some of them might be having crisis and they don't know you see some of them might be doing activities that are so much severe and it's not even required for them because to make them maybe develop a crisis you see some of them are not adherent to their drugs and that will lead them to crisis so you might be treating an educational proper management of educational uh, uh, parameters if they're not taken good care of this patient will come back frequently into the facility and that is not what we want for our children you see now that is the best the best the best you would do to this patient you see you make sure that their drugs are taken good care of their doxyurea will really help to bring the there's what we call it will try to oxidize the cell and it, it will always try to minimize the painful crisis that they do experience it will also help them to at least uh, the cells are able to regenerate uh, hbf that is the fetal hemoglobin that is normally into uh, the lower gestational ages zero to around six months the, the cells are able to produce now above that you give them hydroxyurea to at least help them multiply the fetal hemoglobin that is very very important for the for the for them so that they don't uh, experience too much pain and maybe that is the best you can do you see now anything that i have left uh, just look for guidelines and read accordingly and see on how you are going to manage the patient patient properly because we never want to lose any patient number one what you don't forget is that before getting an engagement with any other partner a partner why don't you just do a sequel test confirm it and make sure that sickling test is done so that you don't engage yourselves when someone is a carrier and you're also a carrier you are not going to you know live peacefully you're going to give the children that you are you're going to to give birth they'll have too much burden and they'll never live with this condition peacefully because it's a very 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 weird condition we're just trying to help each other I'm not perfect either in my presentation but I would love you to share my presentation it will only take you one minute to click the subscription bell just sus subscribe share let's have a discussion let's know what takes place let's discuss but then now I'm very very happy and thanks for subscribing I'll be able to teach more and more and more if one day God blesses with bigger bike, bigger gadgets and uh, enough uh, equipment so that I may be able to reach people globally and I know I will succeed. Impossible is a very very big lie. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for giving me the support. People that have encouraged me, people like uh, Prof. Dharma Sanguta and the rest, people who have mentored me. Thank you so much. I would want to thank you and keep on praying for me so that I may succeed. I know everyone succeeded in this. They just started from uh, the level ground. Thank you, thank you. Continue subscribing. Next time, I'll discuss another crisis and give you more complications and everything. Keep on watching. Bye-bye.